This video is to replace an older video that I did on how long does a 510k take to get clearance. Now, I wrote a book called um, How to Prepare a 510k in 100 Days. And everybody hears 100 days and they don't hear the part prepare. The reason why I said prepare a 510k in 100 days is because that's approximately how long it takes to do your testing. Even if you parallel path everything, you're looking at probably about 12 weeks or around 100 days to do your submission. So that's doing your biocompatibility testing, doing electrical safety and EMC testing. No matter what combination you try, electric, uh, maybe it's sterilization and validation. 12 weeks or 100 days is about how long your fastest possible verification validation testing could get done. So while you're doing that, in parallel, you can prepare the 510K. How long does it take to prepare a 510K? I've done one in a day. I've done seven in a week. Last September, end of the fiscal year, we got that many done. Mary Vodder, she had a client that came to us with one that had gotten an NSE letter for the client, took what the client had done, repackaged it into an e-star, the new FDA e-star template, submitted it to the FDA, took her three and a half hours. I can't do it that fast, but you can see the preparation of the 510K is not the hard part. The testing is what takes the time before you submit. But what most people are asking is, once I submit the 510K, how long is this going to take me? And the only way to answer that question correctly is to show you with three examples. Normally, we say it takes on average about 125 days, but not all submissions are created equal. If I give you a device that's very straightforward, almost identical to a predicate device, and it's a software-only device, it might take less than 90 days. But if I'm submitting something that's quite different, it might take longer. So last week, we finished up a pre-submission uh, webinar series. It was four sessions. Each session was about 45 minutes long, and I explained how to prepare the new pre-star pre-submission template from the FDA. And I used three examples, and we filled them all in for people. So there was one on an, an infrared thermometer. One was on a, um, uh, a pregnancy test. And the third one was on an antimicrobial gauze. So they had three different product codes. So I'm going to show you on the screen three different ways to figure out how long that takes. And so that might help you understand how the answer depends on the three-letter product code. And if you have an introductory meeting with anybody on our team, we can all walk you through this. And we use proprietary software. That it's not our software. We license it. But this is what we use for every single project to help us find the answer faster. How long is it going to take? What is the best predicate? What kind of testing is required? Those kind of questions. That's what we use this software for. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm showing the Bazel system software, which is what we use. And it's a natural language algorithm that um, searches the database, and they've skimmed all the data off the FDA website and put it in their own database, which works much faster. So that saves us time right there by not having to go through the FDA's really, 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 really slow website. So three different product codes. I happen to already know what these are because we already did sessions. So one of the codes is for a clinical thermometer, an infrared thermometer. It has um, a three-letter code, FLL. So now that I've I've put that in here, we're going to pick a recent one. So we'll, instead of going oldest to um, newest, we're going to go newest to oldest. So we're going to pick this one here, infrared thermometer, the newest one. And I'm going to click on review time. So this is going to give me a graph, but it's giving me 2003 only. So I want to take it back to 2012. So the reason why I want to pick back to 2012 is because 2012 is when the FDA implemented an RTA policy. And that changed things quite a bit. It also changed the length of the submission and what's required in them. Before it was somewhat vague, not vague anymore. They have a very specific checklist that they required. And as of October 1st of this year, everybody's going to have to use the new FDA e-star template. So now everybody is going to be in the exact same format and content and it's going to have an automatic checklist, so there's no pre-screening required. They have a technical review to make sure you answer the questions correctly, but it's much more streamlined and much more consistent now with this new FDA star, and that's all we use. 
So what this graph is showing you is from 2012 to 2023, there were 392 devices in the FLL product category that got cleared. And this particular example was 318th in order. So it took quite a bit longer, the 295 days that they took. So somebody told them 90 days, that was bad advice. It took 205 days longer. The 125 days that it's average, they didn't even do that. And the average for this group is 183. Now, we have traditional submissions, abbreviated submissions, and special submissions. If we just look at the traditional, it gets a little worse. We're at 195 days average because it cuts out the specials that were shorter. Abbreviated really don't save you any time. They have the same target of 90 days. And a lot of people don't know how to do an abbreviated right. So we just do the traditional submissions unless it's a resubmission of an existing device and you made a minor change. That would be a special. So in this case, 195 days is the average for traditional submissions since 2012 to 2023 for infrared thermometers. So that's the answer for that. So 125 would have been bad information. So it's an average, but it's an average of the whole entire database not this three-letter product code. So that's the kind of question you want to ask. And you can see from the density of this, there's a lot around this, but it ranges from 100 to 300. So anywhere in that range could be acceptable. Why is it such a broad range? Because the FDA gives you 180 days to answer any questions that they have for additional information. So if you take the 90 days, add 180 days, that's 270. So the difference there is just how long it takes you to respond to the requests. If you do a better job of preparation, get better advice, and do a pre-submission, you can avoid that big delay, and it'll be closer to the 125 that the average is, or even closer to the 90 days. So I expect to see, as everybody starts using these new FDA E-STARS, and people take our advice on how to do pre-submissions, we're going to see that number come down. The clients that ignore our advice, and they don't do pre-subs, and they skip tests because they want to save money, they don't get the review times that they want because this stuff in information testing uh, reports that is missing from this mission. Okay, now we're gonna look at the next device. The next device that we're gonna pick here is in the FRO product category. This is an antimicrobial gauze. And just to make sure that I get what I want here, I'm gonna put antimicrobial Oh, I put an extra R in there. We don't want to do that. And I put a little backward slash on there too. So here's an antibacterial bandage. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but not bad. Um, so we'll pick this one right here. And we'll look at the review time once again. And um, we're going to change this because it goes all the way back to 1976. You can see back in 1976, things were a little different. Um, we have one that took over 3,000 days. I don't know how you do that. Maybe that's a typo. <laughs> but uh, 2012 was the date that I told you that we typically use to 2023. We've got 274 devices. This particular one I picked was 412 days. So they were very unhappy with how long that took. But the average again here, the median is 197. So and we would have to go through this more thoroughly to identify which ones were antimicrobial gauzes versus some other type of dressing, uh, because this whole code FRO is for dressings. And there are a lot of different kinds of dressings, like burn dressings, um, uh, hemostatic agents might be in here as well, all kinds of stuff's under the FRO category. So you want to narrow that 274 down to your type of device to try to figure out where they're having problems and if, if it's something that's expected to be longer or shorter. But this gives you a first glance at what FRO should be. The third one we had was a pregnancy test. So remember, the last two were under 200 days. Uh, FCX is a pregnancy test. We'll see how we do with that pregnancy test. So we're clicking on this one right here. It's, um, oh, I did the wrong thing. So I clicked on the code, and I meant to click on the actual um, product. And I don't know why this is under this code. Okay, maybe I uh, picked the wrong code here. So pregnancy test. 
LCX. See, I make mistakes. Um, so LCX is the three letter product code for a pregnancy test. And if we go back for one second to this, if I click on the LCX example here, it's a 2023 device. If I click on the review timeline and I roll this back to 2012, okay, we got a much smaller subset to work with here. This is 36 devices uh, cleared under this code since 2012 till today. And this particular one was 53 days. It might be because it was a um, special 510K that it was less than 90 days. If it disappears when I click on traditional, we'll know that's the case. No, it didn't. So this might have been um, shorter review for some other reason. Might have been a very minor modification, but the FD asked them to um, resubmit it, at, convert it over to a traditional submission. And so that might be um, part of the reason why it's a shorter delay, or they just did a really good job of organizing all their information. But I'd be willing to bet money they use their own device as a predicate. And then for the median for this category, it's 201 days. So this is, of the three examples that we looked at, this is the longest. And this is generally what we see. We see IBD devices generally take longer, and there's a very important reason for that. It's because they have to provide clinical data. They still have clinical specimens that they have to gather to do the accuracy testing and, and make sure that there is no interference. So they have to gather real clinical specimens and look at the clinical performance of these IBD devices. And that takes more time for the FDA to review than a bench top testing that's non-clinical data. So that's the fundamental reason why these on average take longer. And you also have fewer submissions to work with for this product category. But somebody cracked the code or they use their own devices as, as the predicate. Um, but those are the kinds of things we investigate and try to figure out how did somebody do this so much faster than others. Uh, there was one device that we work on. They only had like three or four predicates to choose from. And one was substantially less than everybody else. And we were trying to figure out why. Well, number one, they hired a really good consultant that I happen to know out on the West Coast. That helps. But number two, that person did a pre-submission with the FDA and asked the FDA, in your um, in your decision summary for this de novo, you indicated that clinical data isn't required, but everybody else is providing clinical data. Can we provide this instead? So they did non-clinical um, testing, performance testing, to demonstrate the performance of the device in human factors testing. The FDA accepted that. They did exactly what they said they were going to do in the pre-submission and they got a much faster review. So that's the key. Do your pre-submission, plan it up front, give the FDA the details, ask specific questions, and you can avoid these longer delays, and you will be closer to that 125 days that's the average, then you will be out here towards 200 days like this particular device. You got to get those clinical study protocols either eliminated or dialed in so the FDA likes exactly what they're um, seeing before you've even actually done the testing. I hope that helps everybody understand how long does a 10 k take. And if you have other questions, schedule a free call with us. The introductory calls for 30 minutes are free. Have a great day. Bye-bye.